Hello YouTube and welcome back. Got a little bit of a different topic for you on this video. I'm going to talk to you about what is probably the most misunderstood and in some circles the most feared knife in the world. Oh, scary. What am I talking about? Right there. What is so fearsome about this? This is what uh, some people refer to as a Mokotogan. Uh, we call them a crooked knife. I've used these knives for many, many years. Um, I've been making these knives for probably 45 years. Uh, this one here is actually a knife that my great-grandfather on my maternal side of the family made. And it's been handed down through the generations. His son, my grandfather, had it. He, would, uh, he gave it to my mother shortly before he passed away. And... Uh, it's in my possession now. This one is kind of unique because it was made with a uh, straight razor blade. As you can see, it's got kind of a triangular cross section. Uh, you can see some writing on the side of the blade here if we focus in. The maker of the blade. This one is uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of a unique little knife. Another one that I have here. This one was made by my father's father, my paternal grandfather. Uh, his name was Theodore Long. You can see his initials is carved in the back. This one's carved out of yellow birch, I would say. And this blade was made from a file. You can still see a little bit of the cross hatching on the steel from where it was made of the file. I've used this one a lot over the years. So what's uh, What's a Mokotogan or a crooked knife used for? Well, they're very handy for uh, carving out uh, axe handles, snowshoe frames, uh, canoe poles. They were a traditional knife uh, used by the Native Americans at the time that the, the Europeans showed up on these shores here in Canada. And uh, the uh, original styles of these knives was actually fashioned by using a crooked stick and uh, a set of incisor teeth from a beaver and uh, it wasn't long until the the white man showed up on the shore and he decided to uh, improve on the design of the knife they started making them with a steel blade and uh, at one time the Hudson Bay Company sold the the blades for making these knives it was uh, part of the trade goods that they would sell with fur trappers and traders and whatnot traveling through the the wilds of Canada and the northeastern United States. The name uh, Mokotogan actually comes from, I believe, the uh, Wabanaki Indians of the, uh, the northeastern part of the United States. And, of course, the Maliseet Mi'k uh, Mi'kmaq Indians from the east coast of Canada, they use these knives a lot. Uh, you notice one of the distinguishing features of this knife is that it has a bent blade and that is because you hold this knife in your hand like this and you draw the knife toward you and uh, usually it's done with uh, the wood or you know axe handle whatever you're making held across your lap and so this is a one-handed draw knife with the knife drawn towards you um, there's a few examples of people that make these or make what they call a Mokotogan on YouTube. I have searched YouTube thoroughly and I have never found anybody on there yet that makes a true traditional Mokotogan, which is why I'm doing this video. There's a lot of uh, misinformation about them out there. There is one, uh, one guy that does survival videos that uh, he produces a handle that is pretty much just a a stick with a depression in it for a thumb and his blade is on the end of it and that is the most awkward style of handle I've ever seen that probably turns more people off to using a Mokotogan or crooked knife than any other style of handle out there the crooked knife handle should be designed to fit your hand very comfortably it should just set right in there and it's it's in the grip of your hand as you see when you grab it 
There should be no strain on your hand, no strain on your muscles. It should just fit in there. When you close your fist, your thumb lays up along the back of the handle. Now I've got a couple of other examples. This is, uh, this is one of my own make. And this one is made, uh, I actually used 01 tool steel. Now I depart it from the traditional wire wrap with this one. I pinned the, the handle in. And this is a style of, excuse the mosquitoes, this is a style of blade that I like to make. My blade not only bends on this plane, but it bends this way. And that lets the knife lay flatter to my work because when your hand comes forward, it's natural that your, uh, your hand is on a little bit of a, an angle this way. And so by curving the blade, it makes it so that my blade lays perfectly flat to the work that I'm using. Uh, here's another one that I just, it's almost ready to leave the shop. This one's spoken for by a, a wood carver. This is done in the traditional wire wrap style. Added a few decorations. I made some mosaic pins and uh, cut them into thin slices. Epoxied them into the handle. Grooved a little design into it here and uh, inlaid some epoxy in that. But it's got the traditional wire wrap. Now this is... Uh, uh, brass wire, what the the old timers would have used as snare wire for snaring rabbits and small animals. Uh, this blade is a one tool steel. But you can see from the design of the handle, this knife just, it just sets right there in your fist. There's no no fight in the knife to get a, a comfortable grip. There's, there's nothing strained in my hand. The knife is just setting in there and, you know, it's, that is... That is the traditional design right there for a Mokotogan handle. Uh, another one here. I was working on this one this evening. I actually ran out of ran out of snare wire on this one. I, I have to go down to the house and find some snare wire. But uh, this one is in the process of being done. Inlaid some uh, some brass spots up the side of it here on each side of the handle. And once again, carved to fit perfectly in the fist. This is this is. A design that is it is so comfortable and so easy to use. Uh, the blade of the Mokotogan. This is another mistake that I see a lot of makers do. They'll you make a blade that is four or five. You know, I, I've seen one guy on YouTube. He's got a blade that's almost six inches long. When you're pulling a Mokotogan towards yourself, your center of pivot should be across these two fingers here. This should be where you're feeling the strain. If you've got a knife that is four or five inches long, maybe longer, what happens is the force pushing back on that knife is changing the angle of pull. So you're starting to feel strain over here in your hand. And the knife is dragging, it's pulling these fingers out of the grip, and it's, it's, it's just not a very comfortable way. Now I've seen Oh, in my lifetime, I've seen probably a hundred traditional examples of these knives. There was uh, an old blacksmith across the river from me years ago. Uh, before he passed away, he had 31 old traditional Mokotogans in his shop. Of course, crooked knife was what he called them. 31 of them, and this would have been the longest that any of the blades would have been. This blade here, this is my grandfather's. This blade is almost four inches long. It's about three and three quarters. The majority of the, the knives that I've seen over the years have been straight blades, and they have been from three inches down. I have seen original crooked knives with a blade that was barely two inches long. The reason was these blades are for small, precise cuts. Therefore, you know, getting in there on, on an axe handle or getting in there on a snowshoe frame, taking small planing cuts off, and they're not designed for taking huge, great big shavings or digging big lumps of wood out of, out of a stick. That's not their purpose. Their purpose is this is a craft knife. It's for doing small cuts, and the big blades throws the knife off balance in your hand. And after you've used it for a while, it becomes very uncomfortable. If you use a, a traditional Mokotogan with a small blade, you find that these 
these knives are they're they're a, a you know a pleasure to use. You take a knife like this here, put it in your hand. This one has this blade is actually uh, this one is just barely three inches long. You take this knife here. You can work with that knife all day long, and your hand don't get tired because it's proportional to the job that you're doing. Now, uh, have another one here. This was stuck away in a cabinet because this is the very first one that I ever made. I stuck it away and I never used it. I got my blade too long. Yeah, typical young lad. You know, I was I was probably 12 years old, 14 years old. Um, I made an upswept tip on this. I've seen a few traditional knives with the curved tip. In fact, every now and then I'll have a, a wood carver, especially spoon carvers, bowl carvers, that will request a swept tip on them. Uh, I, I don't like the swept tip myself personally. I mean, I can see there's a purpose for it. Uh, of the traditional models that I've seen, and I've seen probably... I've seen probably 80 traditional knives in my lifetime. Uh, I've seen probably three that had a swept tip on it. I know on YouTube it seems to be, you know, the latest fashion to have knives that all have the curl tip. And some people refer to the Makatagan as a crook knife instead of crooked knife. It's not a crook knife. You know, that upswept tip is not... It's not standard for these crooked knives. Where it gets the name crooked is this bend in it. That's where the crooked knife comes in. And the handle, of course, you know, when you when you look at this, this is almost making a, a C shape. That's designed to set in your fist like that so that when you're using it and you're drawing it towards you, you've got control of the knife. Now, the next thing I want to talk about this uh, actually demonstrated one of my knives not long ago on uh, a short video on Facebook. And uh, actually it was this knife right here. Unfortunately it was a British bushcraft site and uh, man alive, I got chewed apart. British guys and Eastern European guys have no clue what a Mokotagan is or what it's used for. I got so many nasty, nasty comments about these knives and knife safety and, and how I was a complete idiot for using a knife that I would pull towards myself. Because you see, a Mokotogan works towards you like this. And you can work wood. Now, granted, you would usually lay your wood down across your lap and you would use it that way. Now see how nicely that's, that peels? Like I can, I can even lay that in there and I can take the finest of shavings off. Now, before all of you have a heart attack about me using a knife pulling towards myself, stop and consider the ergonomics of your arm. When you take a knife like this and you pull it towards yourself, at this point right here, See, this knife is its still six inches from my chest. At this point right here, your bicep and your elbow lock up. Do that. You feel that in your arm? When I'm pulling this knife, and this knife is setting crosswise to my body, and that knife comes to there, my arm locks up. I now have to force myself to bring this knife backward. See that? That is the action of a crooked knife. It comes to this point here, four to six inches from my chest, and stops. I've got to make it go back. In fact, it is difficult. I mean, I'm 58 years old, and I've been running a chainsaw for years. It's difficult on my shoulder to get it back to the point where that knife actually touches me. That is the scary part to people that have never used one of these knives. They look at a knife drawn towards themselves, and the first response is, you're an idiot, you're using a knife the wrong way. Well, about 3,000 years of native craftsmen 
used a crooked knife. 200, 300 years of uh, fur traders, trappers, uh, explorers, bushcraft men, woodsmen, using them. Northeastern United States, Canada. And you know what? I have yet to ever hear a story of somebody being killed by a crooked knife. Because if you use it properly, it is impossible to cut yourself with one of these. You would have to turn this, point it towards yourself, and pull it straight back before you could cut yourself. If you're using a Makatagan in the proper style, in the proper manner, it is impossible to cut yourself with one of these knives. Now, I know, all my, my British friends, you know, <laughs> you're going to freak out because you don't know how this knife is used. That's evidenced by the chewing that I got on uh, on Bushcraft, uh, you know, I, mean, I ain't going to say the name of the channel, but, you know, it's Bushcraft UK. <clears throat> but, these knives are so handy to use. When I'm making axe handles here in the shop, and this is this is my humble little shop you can see behind me. When I'm making axe handles, I would not even start out to make an axe handle if I didn't have one of these. I just, I use them every day. I love these little knives. Uh, snowshoe frames, like I say, canoe poles. If you want to do some some precise whittling, you don't want to do some, some carving, you want to reduce something down in size. These things are just so handy and so simple to use. So, where does this start out? Well, believe it or not, these handles start with something like this. Now, I've got a son that works in the woods. He does pre-commercial thinning. Some of you may know what that is. Some of you may not. He brings me a supply of these, uh, these sticks. Now, you look at that stick. You may not see a lot of potential, but you know what? There's the perfect form for taking a crooked knife handle out of. Now he's got some other ones here. He, he peeled the bark off this one. That is just, that's got to have a trip to the bandsaw. But uh, you get the idea. Somewhere in some of these sticks, maybe not all of them, but somewhere in some of these sticks, there's a crooked knife hiding, waiting to come out. The reason that Hudson Bay sold just the knife blade was because any woodsman, any trapper, any native craftsman could sit down, take a piece of wood like this here, a straight blade knife, maybe a hatchet to do some rough out, a little bit of work, a few hours, carving, whittling, and they could come up with something like this, you know? Maybe not decorate it like that. Maybe it's gonna, maybe it's gonna come out like this one here. This one had a. I don't know if they actually drilled that hole or if they just worked that out with the point of a knife. But uh, it's done. It's got kind of a. It's got a flattened profile and it's flattened down the sides there. But uh, yeah, this little one here that my grandfather made. That's got a just a fine little turn up on the top of it there. I don't know if you can see it real well. But, uh, whoop, hands in the wrong way for the camera. Just a fine little curve. My grandfather used this to make, uh, we have, uh, actually I still have them in my possession, a uh, big butter bowl that he made, and it's probably 24 inches long by probably 12 inches across. It's about uh, six, six or seven inches deep. It's got a handle carved in each end. He carved it out of a blocky yellow birch. For working the uh, the raw butter on the farm, working the the milk and stuff out of the butter, he made the butter bowl. He made a paddle, and the paddle for working the butter was turned out of a or carved out of a piece of yellow birch, and it's it's pretty much the same shape. It's got the handle, and then the the big paddle part comes out like this here. He made both of those with this knife. He made a uh, the butter press, the the form that you put the the butter into to make the the one pound blocks of butter. He actually carved his own butter press with this knife after making the knife handle out of a piece of yellow birch and uh, making the blade out of a file. And uh, you know a little bit of tempering and 
I just touched the, the blade up on this one this evening with a, a ceramic sharpener and this thing is just as sharp as could be. There's probably another couple generations of uh, use in this blade. This will go to one of my sons and after him, you know, whatever. Uh, I actually had a, an order from a, a carver. This one is going out. As soon as the finish is completed on this one, this is going to a wood carver who has, uh, he's not native himself, but he does native style wood carvings. And uh, he's been using, or had the, had the fortune, the good fortune of using a Makatagan that was 150 years old that uh, another native carver had been using. And, uh, you know, he was so impressed with the, uh, the Makatagan that the other guy had that he he wanted one of his own and he's been trying to find uh, trying to find somebody that crafts these things and he yeah, a cousin of his got my name you know from across the country and uh, this one is actually going to British Columbia in a couple of days so uh, yeah fearsome knife to some people if they don't know what they're doing I'm gonna have uh, a couple of further videos on these and I'm going to show, I'm going to take you through making one of these from start to finish. And uh, then I'm going to show you how I use them. You know, put them to work in the shop and uh, making axe handles. And uh, yeah, that's, that's probably what I'll make, you know, is, is carve out an axe handle or two with them. But uh, just wanted to show you just a quick little video, you know, of, uh, of the potential of a bent tree limb and a little bit of steel, and a little bit of wire. Hopefully we find some more wire for the night suit. Get some finish on this guy, get him started. Thanks for watching. Tune in, subscribe, hit the like button. You know the whole routine. I'll be back with more. Thanks for watching.